Welcome back to Vertical Thoughts, the climbing podcast by Climbers for Climbers. Today I'm joined by two fantastic rock climbers, fantastic looking rock climbers. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, Josh. Why don't you go ahead and take the lead? Hi, I'm Josh. Uh, I'm sponsored by sunscreen. I never wear sunscreen though. And I like to climb. That was beautiful. That was really well done. Yeah. Sunscreen. Mm. In case you should you, wear it. In case you, you wanna wanna not uh get sunburn. Um our second guest of the evening. Zach, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey guys, I'm Zach. Uh I've been climbing eight years. Whew. Ooh. Climbing as long as pretty much vital has been open in Marietta as a gym. And uh been loving it ever since. Been loving it and we've been loving you ever since and it's cool that you've been climbing eight years it shows i mean it really shows i mean i've been climbing since like the dawn of time but you know i'm just we don't have to compare we don't have to compare (laughs) (laughs) the eye contact i just gave you i I gave you the side eye so so for for those of you listening at home uh josh is joining us uh, virtually from another location, not too far, you know, five, ten miles away. Uh, Zach is here with me in person, so if you hear uh, groping sounds, you know they're coming from our end and not from Josh's end. Also, what does a groping sound sound like? <laughs> there was no noise. Sounds like nothing, nothing at all. Uh, he groped me and you didn't hear it, just so you know, for the folks at home. Yes. Yeah. Uh, today... We're going to be discussing the dichotomy of indoor and outdoor climbing. Uh, Not necessarily a versus between the two, but, but, you know, the video is going to be titled Indoor versus Outdoor Climbing because that's grabby and uh, we we, we need your views, to be honest. Much like groping, very grabby. It's very grabby. Zach is also very grabby, but... Indoor versus outdoor climbing. Um, We'll start with a very uh, very basic question for you two. Um, What have you done more? What have you experienced more? Um, And for me, it is uh, astoundingly indoor climbing. I mean, I've probably done more indoor climbing to outdoor climbing by a factor of like 20, like uh, much more indoor climbing. I, I actually have very little outdoor climbing experience, which is funny because of how long I've been rock climbing and with how many outdoor climbers I've gone climbing outdoors with. Um, but often growing up with friends that climbed outdoors, we would go outdoors to climb and I would take pictures and hang out and chill and I never really got on anything. I just didn't feel comfortable outdoor climbing until very recently. So uh, for me, astoundingly, just massively so, way more indoor climbing than outdoor climbing. What about you, Zach? I'd say, yeah, um, same thing because, dude, indoor climbing is just so resourceful. It's there. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? I don't have to spend gas money to drive out to like Joshua Tree or like Idlewild. Like I just go like 15 minutes down the road to my local gym and there I am climbing ready to go Josh what about you oh yeah uh, same I I live like five five minutes away from the gym um, I go there multiple times a week I feel really good if I'm going like once a week outside uh, yeah I mean that's that's a good amount that's more than I think uh, I wouldn't say most people, but I think that's more than most people, for example, in our gym go outdoor climbing. Um, There are those who go outdoor climbing several times a week, but you got to, there's certain restrictions to that. I mean, it's an access thing. Uh, The the gym, like you said, Zach, is just so accessible. It's it's easy. Um, You know, it's a monthly fee that you pay. Um, There is, in fact, a fee involved with outdoor climbing, you know, whether you're camping or you got to purchase gear or pay for parking, you know, there there are fees associated also with outdoor climbing, it's it's not necessarily always free. Um, And there is, you know, access issues. And also there's, like, time conflicts. I mean, I frankly, would love to go outdoor climbing two, three times a week, but it's, it's not as easy as like you said, just picking up, rolling into the gym, climbing for a bit. And then going home. I mean, it's a project. You gotta, you gotta load the car. You gotta get out there. You know what I mean? Get your guidebook. Decide what you're gonna get on, et cetera, et cetera. So really, I think the fact that each of us, you know, three different climbers, frankly, having like different backgrounds in climbing, um, have have climbed, you know, much more indoors. I think it really just speaks to the ease mm-hmm. of indoor climbing more than anything else. 
Yeah. Not to mention, like, the fees of, like, buying a crash pad. Or mm-hmm. even if you don't have one, like, asking to borrow your friends for one. Asking your friends to borrow one, you mm-hmm. know? It's, it's kind of a pain. I mean, there's... There's just more to it. It's it's more complicated to climb outdoors than it is to climb indoors. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, a lot of things in life require more effort, you know, and necessarily not necessarily better or worse, which is kind of what we're going to talk about today. But um, f- for each of you guys, um, when was the first time, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the first time, but what is the, the first time you can remember um, having an outdoor climbing experience? Um, I think the first outdoor climbing experience I ever had, um, I think I went out to Josh Retreat with a couple of friends from Vital that don't even climb there anymore, and uh, we were just rolling through, hitting all the all the projects throughout there, like Roof Romp, and like we checked out White Rasta. We didn't jump on it, but we just looked at it, and we were like, whoa, that's freaking crazy. And um, the first time I hit real rock, I was just like, dang. Like, this stuff is not to be, like, played with. Like, it was tougher, especially Joshua Tree. It was, like, tougher and messing up my hands constantly, scratching, like, bumping the back of my hand and it just starting to bleed, you know? Yeah. Just all that kind of stuff. Yeah. What about you, Josh? Yeah, for me, I'm trying to think back to, like, my first official climbing experience. Like, growing up, I'd always like mess around on, on boulders and stuff, but, but nothing like official. I think the first official time, like I went climbing was, was actually, uh, ice climbing, um, back in Montana where I'm, where I'm from. And I wasn't even like a climber at that point. I just had a friend who, uh, was really into ice climbing and I basically got into, into it because I wanted to hang out with him more. And I was terrified of heights, like beyond measure. And yeah, um, as far as as rock goes, um, it was probably like three years ago, um, just doing some like simple sport routes back in Montana. Did you, uh, after you started, ice climbing was it was it then that you picked up gym climbing um it it actually took a while um so i i had a friend who like i said was really really into ice climbing and there was like one winter where i where i went quite a bit with him and then um he kind of moved on from from that and got married and stuff you know and kind of uh didn't ice climb that regularly anymore so it was a couple years later i got into into gym climbing i got a membership at a gym and um yeah just from that point on i i I became kind of a more serious climber yes it's it's interesting for some people um what the the hooking experience is in other words if you experience climbing outdoors once and that leads you to a gym or if you experience climbing indoors and eventually that leads to naturally searching outdoors for you know rock climbing Mm -hmm. um for me personally it was indoor climbing that i experienced first and i didn't even even develop an interest for outdoor climbing until much much later on because i saw you know people who were good at indoor climbing and i was like this is not when you told me rock climbing this is not at all what i pictured this is something totally different and in my opinion like a lot more attainable uh you know no harness just some pads bouldering in the gym i was like you know what maybe this can work (laughs) maybe i also was very afraid of heights (laughs) i remember i thought i thought climbing was all subjectively like to rope like if you're gonna climb you're gonna climb on rope Mm -hmm. and then when i found out bouldering was the thing i was like dude this is so rad Cause I remember, dude, when I was a kid, I was like a little monkey. I'd be climbing on trees, anything like my house. I was climbing all over the place. And when I first started getting in the, into the gym, my friend um, showed me Vital, and dude, I was hooked. Like I was hooked from the beginning. Yeah, I think I think gym climbing has a very good way of 
of doing that. I think it has a very good way of, you know, kind of showing off of it, showing off itself and, and everything that it is in the first 10 minutes. You know what I mean? You walk into a gym and you start taking all the sights in and seeing everything that's going on. You know, you see uh, beginners, you see advanced climbers, you see it all happening in the same place. It's very upfront and in your face. Um, and whereas with outdoor climbing, in my opinion, the playing field is a lot more level. Um, you know what I mean? Because there's not just like, there's not a V6, a V10, a V0, and a V4, you know what I mean? All right next to each other. So you don't get the same diversity, like all in your face. And I think that's for me what did it was like, if you would have taken me outdoor climbing before I had gone indoor climbing or had developed any interest in climbing, I would just be like, oh, well, my, my fingers hurt and I'm bad at this. So I think I'm going to not do it again. <laughs> But but gym climbing presented to me, you know, a scaled, tiered system of like, I'm going to start here and work my way up to that climb right over there, 10 feet to the right that I don't have to hike to. <laughs> That's my project right over there. I could see it from where I'm sitting. <laughs> it's just, it, again, it comes down to access. It's just easier access. I mean, if you're willing to work for it, outdoor climbing, I would say is maybe more rewarding. Um maybe just my opinion. I think maybe there's people that are very rewarding. You know, if you're climbing at a high level of competition or something like that, of course that changes a little bit. But, um, and speaking of that, you know, your guys' thoughts on, uh, you know, again, I used the word dichotomy earlier. So the outdoor climbing, indoor climbing, and even I would consider competition climbing a third. Um, you know, it's obviously indoors most of the time or all, you know, not all the time. There are outdoor competitions, of course, but um, it is much different than just gym climbing. Um, your thoughts on considering them different sports, you know, how different are they to you and in your mind? I guess I, I don't really think they're, they're too different. Um, there's, there's different factors that, that play it. Um, you know, outdoor can be a lot more of a mental game um, there can be a lot more planning involved. Uh, competition climbing can be a little bit more gymnastic, a little bit more dynamic than just just regular gym climbing, um, typically. Um, but I, I do believe that there's there's definite overlap um, enough so to make it where there's they're not just a separate sport, but yeah, they they can they can overlap and they can complement each other in my opinion i think for me um i could agree to that whole idea of like outdoors you have to be very careful when it's a mental game because it's all about you know climbing your projects and it comes down to you aiming for the mat and knowing how you're going to land and trusting your spotters that are below you know um when i go outdoor climbing that's pretty much half half the thing that i'm thinking about whenever i'm like climbing one of my projects like you know like half dome or like like El Capitan. <laughs> El Capitan. Yeah, you know. You can cut that. <laughs> the, the, da the Dan Wall. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, just out here. You know, a lot of people call me the Filipino Alex Honnold. But, uh, <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. Yeah, I, they do call me. I've called you but I just at think least. That I'm, you know. At least never. <laughs> no, but seriously. Um, Definitely, I can agree with that whole mental aspect. It's, like, very nerve-wracking. And um, I think with comp climbing, reading a climb is so important in comp climbing. Yeah. If you do not know how to read a climb and understand how it's going to work and how it's going to flow or the beta to that climb, dude, there's no way you're going to progress or you're going to get... You're not going to place high in comp climbing if you're going to climb only using power and no beta and having really bad reading on a climb. Um, and then just regular gym climbing, I would say I kind of have a same like mental aspect, especially when there's a new set. I at least try to get in that gym and try to send those purples or, or whatever in one go. Like I, I don't even try to go up there and touch it or sometimes I'll even shy away from watching somebody do the beta first. I just kind of like getting in there and just reading it, trying to read it to my best ability and then jumping on it and trying to send it in at least one to two tries. And I mean, if I can't, you know, no harm, no foul. But um, if I can, I just feel super 
pumped about it, you know? Yeah, I think I think a lot of it comes down to that. I mean, the setting and expectations and then also the risk and reward um, are very different for each. Um, like you said, outdoor climbing and an outdoor project uh, can be something that, as we've seen with climbers like Honnold Caldwell, um, it can consume your life. Um, I mean, an outdoor climb can become uh, a large part of who you are. Um, I don't think that can really happen with an indoor climb. I mean, maybe, you know, unless you're a setter and you just like set the best boulder of all time and they like <laughs> immortalized it or something, <laughs> uh, that'd be cool. But um, for the most part, you know, an outdoor climb c- carries a certain certain gravitas to it that you really mm. wouldn't get with an indoor climb or, and I'm going to say, go as far as to say, especially a competition climb because, um, competition is such a fast paced environment. Uh, there's no projects in competition climbing. You don't have time. Yeah. You, you can't project climbs. You, you, you're shotgunning climbs. You know what I mean? Yeah. One, two, three, four. If you didn't flash those, you're not going to finals. You know, like it's just, yeah. If you get a pump, you're screwed. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And with an outdoor climb, you, you know, come back next time. You come back next week, come back next month, next year, however long it takes, you know, and, until you do it. And yeah. then with, with indoor gym bouldering, of course, you're limited on time depending on how often your gym resets. But it's kind of the same thing. You just you can't do it. You just come back tomorrow. It's a much lower risk and in turn lower reward uh, experience. And in competition, you know, you're up there. You're high risk, high reward. If you, if you can't do it, you're not going to place, you're not going to podium, you're not going to make it to finals, you know what I mean? Your mm-hmm. your goals are essentially being sidestepped by your own abilities. Yeah. Um, and then with outdoor climbing, it's like, you know, you're high risk, even just in terms of safety, you know, it's, I would say the least safe of the three, arguably, even though I think statistically more people get hurt indoor climbing than outdoor climbing. I could be no, I've heard that too. Yeah, I've heard yeah. the statistic. I've never bothered to verify it because climbers like to throw a yeah. lot of statistics out there. Dude, I've seen, even this past week, I saw a dude hyperextend his knee. I heard about a guy hyperextending his elbow. Mm-hmm. Then I heard about somebody rolling their ankle in this in like one gym within a month. I was like, this is nutty. People be out here. Wilding. Wilding, dude. Going absolutely crazy. Have you guys ever been injured uh, climbing and did it happen indoors or outdoors? Um, I was injured once and it was when I messed up. I think this is a common injury for most rock climbers. And, um, I remember I was throwing my, my middle two fingers, uh, my, that's my, my middle finger and my ring finger Mm -hmm. in, um, a little pocket. And I was doing this it was this weird, weird move where I had to throw my right or my left leg through it kind of rose a little bit. And when I rose, it like wrenched on my on my fingers in such a way that it kind of like I can feel my tendons shoot up a little bit. And I dropped and I was like, well, that was weird. And like being a dumb, dumb kid, I like, all right, jump back on it, do the same thing. And then I just feel it like pull even harder and just. It, it was like the weirdest feeling ever and I dropped and I was like oh I, I messed up yeah and uh, I was out for a couple months at least with that I think I messed up my tendons a little bit but and then I just started taping up and it was good to go after that you know yeah uh, Josh any injuries climbing um I actually haven't had any major injuries uh, climbing um, that that like kept me out for more than a week i've had a couple minor minor things happen so I, i've been fairly fortunate in that um actually i think the worst one was when you tried to video me i remember um, that. or actually you didn't even try you successfully videoed me I was and, say, boy i videoed you <laughs> please <laughs> can see yourself yeah videos. <laughs> and yeah i uh, ended up uh pulling my hamstring minor pull it wasn't wasn't that bad though i actually just watched that video tonight because i was looking for a screenshot to use for your picture in the podcast and i watched that moment again and and (laughs) still even in that moment watching it back it like you never saw a point where like you like obviously got hurt but i could tell when you landed on the ground your hand immediately goes to like your left thigh and you just started like babying your leg and i was like "Ooh, this guy's hurt (laughs) yeah 
Yeah, but that wasn't that wasn't even that serious. Um, but yeah, I've been fairly fortunate. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe it's good luck. Maybe it's caution. Yeah, you know, not not pushing yourself way outside your limits. Brooke talked about that in her episode about um, you know how getting her opened her eyes to the risks of climbing and and really made her think twice before every move and consider and even jeremy talked about that last episode totally unprovoked he you know he brought that up and, and talking about how before doing any move you ask yourself am i okay falling off this move because i mean frankly there's a very good chance that you will fall off the next move even if you feel solid you can just fall i mean it just happens and uh, or your girlfriend can drop you right alex honnold <laughs> i'm sorry for that one um don't sorry, talking, Sonny. <laughs> dude, don't be talking about Alex Honnold like that. Especially dude, me sorry. being the Filipino Alex Honnold. Yeah, you guys are real connected. Yeah, dude. Yeah, and then your girlfriend being the... The, the same Caucasian Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> the brunette Sonny. By the way, I don't actually think that I'm the Filipino Alex Honnold. I'm not that arrogant. Uh, I think you are. Yeah, I'm the Filipino Nathaniel Coleman, more like it. Yeah, yeah, I could see that, yeah. <laughs> You guys are both so Definitely. handsome. Yeah. Those are strong words there. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Tiz. Tiz, sir. You can be Alex Honnold on my show, but you want to be Nathaniel Coleman? <laughs> Pump the brakes, buddy. Slow it down. Yeah. Anyways, Nate, buddy, let me know when you're ready to be on the show. Alex, you too. Or Sonny. Yeah. We can have a, we can have an arm wrestling contest and I'll just make you look like ch- chumps. <laughs> <laughs> I... For some reason, out of those two, I would rather wrestle, arm wrestle. <laughs> we'll talk about wrestling later. But I'd rather <laughs> mud wrestle. <laughs> Get in the mud with those boys, dude. Now that's a grabby video title. Yes. I mud wrestle with Alex Honnold? Question mark exclamation mark question and mark exclamation mark. And it has nothing to do with you. Never show footage of that. No. It's just like, what if I mud wrestled them guys? <laughs> it's just this clip of this podcast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but out of those people, I think I'd rather arm wrestle Nathaniel Coleman. I don't want to sit across from a table from Alex Honnold and do anything but like be friends with him. He intimidates me. I don't, I'm not <laughs> really? gonna lie. Something about the the, the stoic nature. That cat's cold, dude. Yeah, yeah I agree. He's he, a cold dude. He seems really cool. And I've actually oh, yeah. I've met him once, and he was yeah. very mellow. You know what I mean? You and met him? Yeah, I met him a while back in a wow, gym I didn't here know in Southern that. California. Whoa. That's so cool. Um, and you know, it's just like real quick. I think he was just yeah. there you know, doing something at the gym, not like uh-huh. a signing, but whatever the climbing equivalent of a signing is, yeah. you know, and, um, and a climbing, <laughs> a climbing, <laughs> <laughs> this guy really brings something to the show we were missing. Yeah. You doing anything like in general? I'm just living life, doc. <laughs> inhale, Josh, what about you? Inhale, exhale. What are you, uh, what are you, uh, what are you benching these days, buddy? <clears throat> like 2000 pounds. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I don't think I've benched in like six years. I, I literally have not. I'm 148 a... soaking wet. Could you bench me? Soaking wet. Oh, my God. <laughs> Probably oh my not. I, don't, I have no idea. <laughs> He's like, I don't know about that one. <laughs> uh, moving forward with the podcast, <laughs> we, uh, we delineated from the topic a little bit. Oops. <laughs> you should be benched for that freaking joke, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord i don't even remember what we were even talking about so anyways that that's the the moral of the story is you, you'd rather arm wrestle the person you're just going to lose to than the guy that's going to intimidate you across dude, the no. table you see me arm wrestle dude are you about to pull with nathaniel coleman right now i'm gonna freaking pull oh, sir yes no i'm just kidding <laughs> Okay. Talking a lot of shit. <laughs> Anyways, Nathaniel Coleman, we're big fans. Just so you know. Yes, we big are. fans. Huge fan. Definitely. I'm a yeah. huge fan of respect, Nathaniel Respect. All Coleman. the respect. Congratulations on Nathaniel Coleman, by the way, in uh, in Marion getting this, this last week or strong. weekend, I should say. Qualifying first place, huh? Freaking strong. Five boy. attempts, five tops. Awesome stuff. Holding it down for Team USA, even though the finals was like the Japan versus Adamandra show. <laughs> And Adam Andre won, All so congrats right. to Adam Andre. I'm here to climb some borders. <laughs> Adam Andre won with a crack climb. None of the Japanese climbers could really get around the crack climb. Yeah. That's, that's rough. Uh, but anyways, it, it, back to what I was talking about. Okay. Really considering every move before you do it, mm-hmm. because you are likely, I would use that word every time, likely to fall. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, maybe Josh, rather than being fortunate... That speaks to you being calculated, you know what I mean? And, and mm-hmm. not taking unnecessary risks in a gym. Yeah, risk versus reward. Exactly. Doing the 
the golden ratio, you know, before you get, you know, is this gonna be worth it if I fall? Um, and I don't know if I've ever seen you take a, take a slam in the gym. I mean, maybe you just pull hard enough that you don't fall. I don't know. Maybe you're just that good. Yeah, now that you mention it, he's a very clean climber. I never see you sloppy dopping it at all. Sloppy dopping it. <laughs> um, but I, I think that's absolutely correct because I also tend to be a pretty cautious climber. I don't fall very much. And when I really do fall, and Zach saw this today, like, <laughs> it shakes me usually. I dry fired harder than I've ever dry fired today. Um, <laughs> on a on a V10 that I was very loosely projecting, like move by move, I was trying each move individually, and I was like really trying to set this high heel, and I was pulling really hard on a crimp with my right hand, and all of a sudden it just, I felt like I took the hold off the wall, dude. Like, <laughs> I went down hard, and I was I was three feet off the ground. Yeah. If I was any higher than that, I think something bad could have happened. I think one of the worst dry fires I ever saw was. Um, my friend, my buddy Joe went out climbing with this boy named, um, Bummer Bro. Dude's pretty cool. Kevin, I think his name yeah, is. Yeah, Kevin, yeah. Um, shout out Bad Beta. Yeah. And, um, uh, there's a video of him hitting, uh, Gypsies, just Gypsies. I think it was. Gypsies Day Out. Yeah, Gypsies Day Out. Mm-hmm. And he's in Black the Mountain. first little, like, two side, I think it was like their side poles, I think, or mm-hmm. pinches. And he just slaps both of them off, and then he drops on the ground. It's this like really menacing slap, and you just hear everybody watching like ooh. Yeah. And then he's like, "What does he say?" He's like, "I think he's like, all right, that's cool." Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Fuck, that's so funny." Yeah, I've, I've seen the video actually, and I've, I rewatched it a few times because you're right. The slap when his hands yeah, hit the pad, yeah. dude. There's something about dry firing. You you start hurtling towards the earth with m- like more than terminal velocity yeah there's something about pulling off a hold dude it's like you are shoved down gravity's like oh that's funny back down to the ground one of my many fears in climbing is if my if i'm in a like a solid heel hook Oof. and i just dry fire with my hands and just swing like a and your heel stays oh my that's my one of my biggest fears in climbing that's a problem like, if I feel bad hands and solid feet, I'm like, I'm not... Like, risk versus reward, I'm like, this is not worth it. Yep. I'm, I'm backing off. And that's that's important. That's an important yeah. calculation to do while you're climbing because a momentary lapse of risk versus reward can cost you the rest of your climbing career, yeah. honestly. I mean, you can... It just takes a split second of being like, this move feels uncomfortable, but people are watching, or, but, you know, I think I could do it, or, you know what I mean? It just takes a split second. And then, you know, you could injure yourself in a way that will never heal properly. I'm not saying if you're going to get injured, it's never going to heal. You know, mm-hmm. I'm just saying it's it's easier than you would think to injure yourself. Definitely. In a way that you couldn't climb for a very long time. Yeah, which is a bummer. It is a bummer, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, we're big fans. <laughs> Um, it's but, a bummer, bro, when you use bad beta. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful, Cold, dude. Right? Give me a fist bump in the mic. One more. <laughs> that was solid. <laughs> Josh, could you hear that on your end? I, I heard it loud and clear. Wow. Moist. Quiet. The fist I licked my knuckles. Around the, world. <laughs> the fist bump heard around the world. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, you definitely see climbers in the gym that slam a lot, you know, they go down hard or they're pulling off things or, you know, falling off climbs. And I'm not saying those are bad climbers or anything like that. It's just, you know, everyone's spectrum for like, what's worth the risk is totally different. And I always err on the side of caution. I find if I feel really uncomfortable on something, I almost always will just back off it. Just be like, yeah. And that's why I didn't outdoor climb for a long time is to me, the reward uh, was certainly not worth the risk. It just, I, I had no interest in risking safety. It is like, a, like I said, probably the least, for me, the least safe. However, you also have to factor in what we're talking about because I think people are more careful outdoors than they are in a gym. I think people get a little wild in the yeah. gym. I think, um, honestly, the analogy that, or the whole idea that comes to mind, it's like they're a bull in a china shop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, toxic climbers. We talked about yeah. that. Um, in, in an episode recently but when I'm climbing outdoors like dude I'm very aware of how I'm gonna land. I literally like mentally map out how I'm gonna land if my foot blows out and I swing out I, I always think about how where I'm gonna land how I'm gonna land 
like it's it's really weird. I just set up all my pads and I'm like, this is where I'm gonna land. I feel it, you know. Yeah. yeah. Being conscious of that is definitely is a real big yeah. thing. And and in a gym, you have three feet of pad in the thing, everywhere. The thing that's so scary is that there are a couple of people that go outdoors and they think like my spotters are gonna are gonna make sure I land correctly. Mm-hmm. And it's like no, dude. They they yeah. control your roll. They don't. They're not gonna freaking catch you, dude. Like. Mm-hmm. Shit's scary when people think like, oh, you know, I'm just going to go freaking flying towards somebody and everything's going to be okay. You know what I mean? Fuck. Forget that, dude. You know, scary stuff. I think it's, I think it's super important just to, uh, like, like we've said, just self assess, uh, a climb, especially outdoors, uh, you know, and know the risks and then, you know, be, either willing to back off or willing to accept the risks. You know, if you're going to do a high ball, you know, you just got to make sure that you understand the risk and and you know, if you get up there, you're not going to freak out. You're going to you're going to just keep a level head, keep climbing climbing hard and you know, keep just staying in the moment. But I think where you get in trouble is when you don't don't assess the climb you don't assess the risks and then you get up and you know you're 15 feet off the ground and you know you can't find that next hold and your pads are in the wrong wrong spot or you don't trust your spotters you know so you got to just take all the all the factors into play and and you know be willing to live with them or back off the climb yeah it's always be thinking about what you're doing when climbing thinking about the situation i think you're right i think the lapses in thought are when like really bad things start to happen is when people don't think when they just get stuck in a you know a momentary like i don't know what you call like a euphoria Mm -hmm. you know what i mean of just like climbing you know some some you know some of the greatest climbing moments I, i i'm sure can occur that way um you know and maybe when Nale sent the first V17 alleged, uh, maybe he wasn't thinking, you know what I mean? Like maybe, maybe there's something to that. I don't know that I'm missing, but, um, I really think the lapse in judgment causes injury and danger. And it causes the difference that we're talking about. The difference between indoor and outdoor climbing, you know what I mean? It's just the risk associated with each one as accompanied by the rewards that follow. And I think there's something to be said about sending your project outdoors. I mean, it's, it's a big thing, and it, it, it can consume your life, like I said, and you can really get some kind of sense of, like, even, like, uh, perseverance. You can learn perseverance just by projecting a climb outdoors because everything else in your life may seem easier after that point because you're like, well, I've been trying this for years, and it never felt possible, but today I just did it even though it never felt possible. So what else is possible that I'm not considering? Well, one thing is, like, I never feel like I'm in danger climbing outdoors unless i'm climbing on a high pole yeah i always feel good if i hit something that's like below 15 feet Mm -hmm. or even around that spectrum of 15 feet i feel good you know also depending on how many pads i have underneath if i have two yeah you're gonna try to hit freaking planet x dude good luck hell no i will never climb a high ball if we have like two pads we need to have like four or five let's go you know lots of pads lots of spotters yeah safety first i mean it's cliche but at this point it's just like if you're climbing indoors don't be reckless you feel safe that doesn't necessarily mean you are Mm -hmm. if you're climbing outdoors you know same thing make sure your spotters are on the same page as you and uh my friend um mark you know a very experienced climber talked about a little bit his climbing partnership with his brother and how they know each other's climbing styles and therefore are able to dynamically spot each other and you know and read each other's falls and and that kind of thing and climb with people you trust and and climb with people that you trust to catch you but do not like zach said do not ever count on people to catch you do as much of the work as you can do by yourself do that first you know what i mean and then if you really need a catch yeah. You know, hopefully your buddies will be there to get you back. But never depend on that. I think just depend on the rollback. Yeah. You slamming your head into the ground. Mm-hmm. You know? Even like yeah. whenever people climb slab, 
I get myself up against the rock. You know what I mean? I get myself up against the rock right next to him, so I pull them away from that rock. Yeah. I do that, dude. It's just, I don't know. Yeah. I would say, yeah, I, I, I would say I try to spot to my best ability. I'm like very attentive. I never look away. I'm just like always focused in on somebody climbing. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually had an experience uh, about a year ago where I was. Uh, I was actually jumping off of the rock onto a pad and I I just told the guys, you know, Hey, I'm going to jump, you know, just, just make sure to to spot me. And uh, a lesson that I learned from that was, so the guy actually like basically caught me and I had the worst whiplash. I mean, it wasn't the worst obviously, but it was, it was actually like fairly bad whiplash from, just him catching like my upper body, not, not catching me correctly or spotting me correctly. And, uh, it just caused a bunch of whiplash. So, you know, I guess just the lesson I learned from that was to, you know, talk, talk people through, you know, what, what proper spotting technique is and, and also just understand, you know, like sometimes the best thing is just to, go with the role rather than getting you know you know someone to to catch you a a spot is is kind of a worst case scenario you know protecting protecting them from hitting a rock you know or i don't know i like um in a spotter i like just even if you land like just a hit on the back just so they just Mm -hmm. so i can feel that they're there yeah i know that they're paying attention and they're being attentive like, I do that all the time. Somebody will drop and I'll just be like, like, not like obvious, like over touching, but like if they come towards me, I'm like, boom, I got you. You're solid. You're not going anywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's funny. I use a similar method to assert my dominance. Oh, wrong. Where um, if they drop to their feet in front of me, I actually, I, I from the back, I shove them forward into the rock. <laughs> That's you know? good. And then I say, don't ever fall again. Yeah. That, uh, I, we need to go climbing outside, dude. You're <laughs> you're a peacock. I need to, yeah, you be peacocking need to go in the gym together more often. In fact, I do it in the gym sometimes too. We're, Zach said he heard about three injuries in the gym this yeah. month. I, oh, I caused you? all of those. <laughs> oh my god! I was spotting someone and they fell. You're you know, fucking... totally controlled, landed on both feet, and then I just swept the leg, dude. Yeah, you're fucking monsters. <laughs> I can't be trusted. You like kick somebody right in the head as soon as they land. <laughs> oh, that was crazy. You rolled back and hit your head. <laughs> you just like, Did you see head. that? Whoa. Whoa. You need to be careful, dude. It's you good. should pay more attention to yourself this on the wall, buddy. Dangerous. <laughs> God. Liam, the climbing villain. Watch out for me. The climbing menace. No, I think... I mean, there's something to be said about actively spotting mm-hmm. um, and not just being a scarecrow. You know what I mean? Holding your hands up. You, you got to actively, you know what I mean? Follow the person's movements and really pay attention to what they're doing. And, you know, just when it comes down to it, I mean, I, it brings up memories of me with uh, my good old buddy Mark, him trying belly flop, which is, uh, I think, a V10, V11 maybe out in uh, Black Mountain. Oof. Uh, a Chris Sharma bit, you know. And uh, as Chris Sharma climbs go, as he does, it's relatively hard Very dynamic. Re- relatively you know dynamic subjectively difficult i for me personally yeah that it's reminds me when not I possible it reminds me when i taught pink crack you know? yes mm. yes pink crack mm. very similar things that v4 and this v11 yeah you know, some some people say the pink crack's harder some be- <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure chris sharma some loves people. when they say that Dude, let's, let's ask Chris Sharma. Let's get him on. Chris, we're whenever you're ready, him. dude, just slide in the DMs and we'll we'll bring you on here. You know, I've never heard of Chris Sharma ever climbing pink crack. Yeah, I don't know if he can. Rumor has it he's afraid of that climb. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've been saying this entire time. <laughs> I think it was Zach that started those rumors. Actually, oh my God. Oh shit. Um, I'm gonna get in trouble. But. <laughs> When Mark was attempting belly flop, essentially what it is, is like one move to a bad crimp, and then from that bad crimp, you do a giant backwards dino uh, to a slopey lip. 
rough. Uh, like not, we're not talking a jug here. You're you're dynoing to a bad lip, um, and it's about seven feet off the ground. It's not very tall. Um, however, it is the rock is facing down a really steep hill, um, and so in that case, our strategy with him was lay out a runway of pads. You know, one pad underneath the start. That's uh, a second pad underneath the lip where he was actually dynoing to. And then the third pad, I was literally holding up to prevent some kind of positive angle for him to fall into. Because if I didn't do that, he would just bounce off the pads and roll down the hill. Yeah. So pretty much, you know, that was a little kind of a drastic example of active spotting, but (laughs) he was really going for this climb. I mean, Mark's a good, solid climber. He's very dynamic. Um, And I believe... You know, he was really close to doing that climb several times, but I also kind of had to like a couple times just drop the shoulder and just like put him to the ground because otherwise <laughs> he's going to fall down the hill behind me and yeah. probably really mess himself up. Yeah. I mean, well, you can't. You just kept trucking him. Dude. <laughs> so it would be really bad because he would, he'd be like, he'd be projecting these climbs. He would fall and then you would truck his ass he would, too. He would take a, take a bad <laughs> running backwards fall. And then just get dropped to the mat. <laughs> and I'd be like, are you good, man? He's just like standing over me. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> he's like, yeah, you like that? <laughs> no, I was horrified the entire time. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> mom and dad are fighting. <laughs> Can you please stick the dino so I don't have to catch you again? <laughs> I'm scared. No, oh, but it's, it's something to be said about an active spotter. And I, I learned yeah. a lot about spotting just from that day, to be honest. Because he, I mean... They have a lot of experience outdoor climbing and, again, spotting each other. So him and his brother and I walked over there, and his brother Tanner, you know, set up the pads accordingly, and he was just like, all right, you ready? And I was like, what? And then, <laughs> and then he did the move, and I was like, oh, my God. No, I was not ready. Uh, did they at least get you props for that? Because that sounds like solid spotting in my book. Um, I mean, he never took a, a real uncontrolled spill, you know what I mean? So I, I never really got no, a chance I meant, like, to... When when you trucked his ass, did you just look up and be like, thank you. <laughs> I th- I think it was the unspoken expectation. We just okay. made eye contact okay. and we we're just, you know a little nod. Sometimes heroes don't get things. Yeah, you know I'm. Thanks for thanks for acknowledging me as a hero. No, dude, but I'd rather get a truck any day than like somebody doing that that half squat, full hands like, up, yeah, and then like as you fall, they never make contact with you, but they just their, their hands, hands follow, follow you. you. Yeah, I love watching that, dude. It's so bad, and then you're like, all right, you're never spotting me again. They just follow like it's like you've got a force field around you yeah. and they can't touch oh. you. They just kind of follow your like your body movement. Yeah. And they're like, "You good?" <laughs> <laughs> they, they pretend they have telekinetic pow- powers like I'm slowing down his fall. <laughs> <laughs> Magneto over here. Somehow I just like I'm floating I'm like, "Wow. <laughs> good job." Well, this this took a turn for the weird, but you know what? I wouldn't have it any other way. This has been a fun one. Yeah. Boys, I, I think we're about towards the end of this. I think we've covered some good topics about indoor versus outdoor climbing and really the risks associated with each. Mm. Um, do you guys have any final thoughts? Um, thanks for putting me in the podcast. I'm stoked. You are very welcome. Stoked to be here. Stoked to be alive. Stoked to be climbing. Stoked to be stoked, dude. Hell yeah. Stoke all around. Josh, are you stoked? You know, honestly, I'm still trying to think about a bad cramp to a backwards dyno. That just... <laughs> Belly flop that is just really messing with you. Fun to me. Uh, look, up, look up the climb. After we're done with this podcast, just I'm look up belly flop. Not. It's I'm probably not going to look up that climb. I'm going to forget that that climb exists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, belly flop. I mean, those, Zach's right. The name yeah. says it all. Those climbs oh, are going to be in your nightmares, dude. <laughs> As mine. <laughs> Uh, well, oh, yeah. it's been fun. Yeah, it's been cool. Um, I'm sure you guys will see more of uh, more of Zach and Josh here in the future. Maybe if they grace me with their presence again. <laughs> um, but ugh, it's been a nice one. I mean, yeah. we are on to episode eight. We're trucking right along. I want to thank everyone for listening, and I just want to remind all of our viewers: um, these episodes are available on Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube, and possibly, fingers crossed, Pandora soon. A little something in the works there. Whoa. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what you guys didn't see is when I said that I took off my shirt and I flexed. Yeah, dude. We're gonna be on <laughs> Pandora. <laughs> and then he sent my, some butt. Making it to the big leagues. Yeah, we're we're some, getting up. Some butt flexes. <laughs> Check out 
check us out on all the above platforms. Check out the website, get some sweet apparel. Um, and for those of you who climb here in Southern California, um, I'm going to be saying this over the next few podcast episodes, but roughly a little less than a month from today, there's a competition going on at the Vital Climbing Gym in Marietta. Um, we are going to be there. Vertical Thoughts is going to be in full swing Let's go. at the competition. So we will see you guys there. If you're in Southern California, stop by, grab a t-shirt, grab a sticker, say hi. Um, I'll sign your butt if you come. Hell yeah, I, I will sign your butt if you come. I will sign, you know, other things too, I guess. But. I swear to God, if I show up at that freaking comp and my butt does not get signed, <laughs> oh, yo. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to be happy. Do you have a, are you going to do a question of the day too? For today? Yeah. I do not have a question of the day. Bummer. I really like the question of the day. Can, can I ask you a question of the day? I mean, I guess, dude, you just... This is my show. I get but you can you know, yeah, whatever, dude. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna do the asking here. What is your favorite color? Dude, did you just get big on me right now? What is my favorite comes on to my show? Dude. And my favorite dude, this is twenty nineteen, bro. I don't see colors. Yeah, dude. A joke Nick said earlier today and he stole. It, that's true. <laughs> I did hijack that joke. What if I make a question? Is that okay? All right, fine. You know <laughs> Dude, what? Getting double cucked. On you your guys own can. Pod. You guys can all just just take the show. I didn't want it. Anymore. Double cuck on your right. own pod. Son. Can you say cuck on? on I podcast? just did. I don't know if that's appropriate. Fine, here I'll do the PG version. All right. Getting bucked on your own <laughs> pod. What is your question, Zach? Do you have a question? I do. All right. What is it? Gorge. <laughs> Gorge. <laughs> that's not my question. Okay. Oh shit, I don't have one. <laughs> what is out of any national park, climbing spot, hiking spot, what is your favorite spot to go to? I through and through am a ginormous fan of Black Mountain. I will always love it. I love being up there. I I love the scenery, I love the smell, the sounds, the climbs. I love everything about it. And um, granted, it's where I've spent the most time climbing outdoors, so maybe it's, you know, haven't experienced some of the other places, and I'm certain that there are places out there that would change my mind. You know, I've never been to Fontainebleau, you know, like, mm-hmm. if I went out there, maybe I'd change my mind, but yeah. there's something to be said about Black Mountain, and for those of you who, who don't know, Black Mountain is here um, in Idlewild in Southern California in the San, uh, San Jacinto Mountains, and it's like a 40-minute drive from where we are to the base of the mountain, and then like 30 yeah. minutes to the top, so it's like... Really close to where we are, and I, I love Super I love it. Super legit spot. Awesome spot. Yeah. Really well known in this area too. Hell yeah. I mean, it's kind of our local crag. I mean, we don't have a local crag, so that's yeah. that's as close as it gets, I think. Yeah, I'd say so. Unless you hit some like unlegit spots. Yeah, there's a like of, a lion's den. Like the lion's den. <laughs> Look it up on the mountain project. The lion's den. Rubido is pretty dope. Go there today, everyone. Go to the lion's den. Go come to Menifee, <coughs> and there's not much more to do. So go to the lion's den. <laughs> yeah. And, and go to Marietta and go to the Vital competition yeah. on May the 4th. Uh, Josh, what is your favorite outdoor spot? Ooh, that's, good. that's a good one. Um, coming, did you? Well, the one that I climb at the most is Joshua Tree. Um, I would say... I would say all around, I, I also like Black Mountain. Um, the climbing... Climbing's good. You got the the pine trees, so that that gives it just a unique feel for Southern California. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll stick with with Black Mountain as well. Joshua Tree is fun, but yeah, I always really enjoy my time up in, in uh, Black Mountain. Mm-hmm. There's something about the place. I think for me. Uh, for climbing, Black Mountain definitely. I mm-hmm. love all of my projects up there. I have a lot. I have Born Under New Pun- or Born Under Punches, which the hole just broke off, which is a bummer. Bro, bro. And then somebody is probably using bad bait on that. And <laughs> <laughs> a lot of free um, advertising today. But for hiking, dude, I love Yosemite. I went once and I was like. I felt like I was at, like, oh, dude, I don't even. I felt like I was at Disneyland, dude. I was like looking up and I was like, oh, 
Ooh, it was beautiful, dude. I was like, trees everywhere. Yep. It was a perfect climate. We went in September. I didn't see any bears, thank God. Yep. I fucking hate bears. <laughs> not, not a fan of bears. They terrify me to this day. I remember. And I ain't the talk- bear. <laughs> I ain't talking about big gay biker men. Is that a... I'm sorry. Yeah, dude. Pause. Is that a thing? Unpause. Yes. It's- <laughs> <laughs> you just got unpaused on your own pod. With that, we're going to end today's episode. <laughs> just like so hurt. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. Thank you, Josh and Zach, for joining me. Uh, I learned a new uh, inappropriate slang term today. I don't know if they like being called that. I'm sorry if you don't like being called that. We I, didn't... Have, I have a lot of respect. For big gay biker men. Yes. Don't hurt me. Thanks for listening. Have yourself a good day, night, whatever it is, wherever you are. We love you. <laughs>